We left off in the last video having mentioned that we could also see absorption lines in black body spectra like this. But this image, of course, is simplified. Real stellar spectra are, as we also mentioned before, a little bit more rugged and choppy, looking more like this instead. Here we can see the stellar spectra of a high temperature star with a short peak wavelength, a medium temperature star with a slightly longer peak wavelength, and a low temperature star with a longer peak wavelength than either of the previous two. But there are all these other features in here that are worth mentioning and taking a second look. And it's not just on this spectrum that these features appear. If we look back at either of the previous two spectra, you'll notice that these features exist here too, both on the spectrum of the medium temperature star and on the high temperature star's spectrum as well. Now we're looking at the absorption spectrum of the sun. For comparison, we have also provided a dotted curve representing the blackbody curve of an ideal 5800 Kelvin blackbody. In this absorption spectrum, we can still see those dips we mentioned before. But what are these features? Well, there are a variety of names for them. They can either be referred to as spectral lines or absorption lines, as they've been called before, but their formal names are Fraunhofer lines. These are lines in the absorption spectrum where the observed intensity is less than expected. The Fraunhofer lines are named after Josef von Fraunhofer, a Bavarian physicist and glassmaker who discovered their existence in 1814 by observing and heavily studying these dark absorption bands in the sun's spectrum. Here he can be seen demonstrating the spectroscope to several of his colleagues. Let's take a look at the Fraunhofer line that occurs at around 800 nanometers. The expected intensity according to the ideal blackbody curve is at a value of around 1.09. The observed intensity, however, is much less, carrying a value of around 0.85 instead. Quick review. What's the peak wavelength of the sun's spectrum according to this image? If you draw a straight line down from the highest point in the continuum of the graph, you'll get a measurement of around 480 nanometers, which is associated with a bluish-white color. Keep this in mind for later. Now that we have these spectra from all of these various stars, some of which have some pretty noticeable features, how do we analyze them and get our data and information? We use a process called spectral analysis. But how is this done? All of the spectra that we have seen so far most likely were produced using a spectrometer. A spectrometer is a multi-piece instrument that attaches to a telescope and spreads out the incoming light into its different colors so that the starlight can be analyzed to determine the star's chemical composition, temperature, and intensity. It could also be used to observe specific wavelengths, frequencies, and energies of light by just adding the appropriate filters into the spectrometer. Any sort of detailed study of these spectra is an example of spectroscopy in action. We've been analyzing the data for practically this whole video so far by looking at the various features of these graphs and trying to understand how they came to be and what information they may tell us. So if we look again at the sun's spectrum, here compared against the blackbody curve from an ideal 5525 Kelvin blackbody, we must take into consideration that this shape is actually the absorption spectrum of the sun as it leaves the sun, before it actually enters Earth's atmosphere. When sunlight finally reaches the surface of the Earth at ground level, it looks more like this. The spectrum shaded in red shows the radiation detected at sea level as compared to the radiation that arrives to the top of Earth's atmosphere, which is shown here in yellow. After the sun's spectrum has passed all the way through our atmosphere, which has absorbed several more wavelengths from the sun's absorption spectrum, we can see even more prominent gaps in the spectrum now. The molecules responsible for these gaps have been identified as some of the most common compounds in the atmosphere, like water vapor, carbon dioxide, ozone, and oxygen. The presence of ozone is particularly important, since it helps block the high-energy UV rays from reaching us at ground level by absorbing them at high altitudes. The more ozone there is in the atmosphere, the wider this absorption band will be, and that sounds pretty ideal. But remember how we looked at the peak wavelength of the sun's spectrum earlier and got a value of around 480 nanometers? If that seemed too short of a wavelength to you, based on your expectations that the sun looks more yellowish white than blue, you're probably right. So now let's take a look at the peak wavelength of the sun's spectrum at sea level, and we'll notice that it's more around 580 nanometers instead, which is exactly the color yellow.
So above the Earth's atmosphere, sunlight looks like this. Whereas from ground level, it has a softer yellow glow. When we look at the spectra of stars, their Fraunhofer lines can be either quite prominent or somewhat elusive. But what can we deduce about the star from its Fraunhofer lines? The depths will give us information about the temperature, and their wavelength shifts can tell us about the motion of the gas in the surface of the star, which is a great example of the Doppler effect. Now this is the full absorption spectrum of the Sun, showing us both the extremely prominent Fraunhofer lines, as well as those that are hardly noticeable and would require a second look. If we look at a more simplified version of the Sun spectrum, showing primarily the more noticeable Fraunhofer lines from the previous spectrum, we can actually identify each line with the element that caused it. Now, if we were looking at the spectrum of this star, which of its Fraunhofer lines would not be visible to us? The absorption lines caused by calcium monohydride and potassium, abbreviated CAH plus K, occur at wavelengths that are too short for our eyes to see, so they'd be the ones invisible to us. But what about here, in this absorption spectrum of a typical blue sky on a sunny day? Which Fraunhofer lines would we not be able to see? There are four that stand out, two with wavelengths that are shorter than the violet end of the visible spectrum, here labeled as capital K and capital H, both of which come from ionized calcium, and two on the opposite end of the visible spectrum with wavelengths longer than those of red light, which are attributed to water vapor and molecular oxygen, labeled capital A. It is from this table that we can identify these major Fraunhofer lines and the elements that cause them in the spectra of the stars that we have observed. It should hopefully come as no surprise that we can say that the number of spectral lines produced and their respective colors are unique to the element or the compounds that produce them. In this example, we can see a sample emission line spectrum from an observed object. Since certain elements have their specific emission wavelengths, we can split this spectrum into the emission spectra of the individual elements that came together to create the original spectrum seen at the top of the image. It's through this exact concept that we're able to look at this spectrum from the sun and determine exactly which elements are present in the sun's atmosphere. This type of spectral analysis can give us a breakdown of the chemical composition of the sun. By analyzing its absorption spectrum, we have been able to detect the presence of all of these elements in the sun. This amazing work was first done by British-born American astrophysicist Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin, who earned her PhD in 1925 for her discovery that stars were composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. To date, about 67 individual elements have been detected in the chemical composition of the sun. In the next video, we'll find out exactly how each element ends up with such a unique spectrum that allows for all of what we've covered in this video in the first place.